I feel like – aloha, everybody. I feel like uh, National Volunteer Week, you know, really. Uh, the uh, One of the jokes that uh, that Brian DeLima, the vice chair – uh, we thought it was a joke. It's a joke for us, right, Brian? Uh, said what, at, right after he was named a little over a year ago to to the board uh, from the Big Island, somebody came up to him and said, "Oh, Brian, boy, you're going to get your high three now." And of course, uh, uh, the emphasis here is, I, and, I, and I said to Brian, "Well, that won't take long uh, because the the board is an all volunteer effort." If there is any group of people uh, who have committed themselves uh, to public service, uh, if if there is any uh, epitome of what constitutes the health of a democracy, it's the capacity for people to come forward to utilize their abilities, uh, the capacities they've developed uh, in their careers uh, on behalf of the public. We uh, find ourselves again and again uh, confronting in some instances, but certainly having to acknowledge that all of us constitute a, quite an interesting melange in some instances of special interests. We're all special interests. A multiplicity of it, uh, of special interests, exists within all of us. The question always is, is can we blend our special interest with, with, uh, with the public interest and act on behalf of the public interest rather than than devolve our special interests into a private interest at the expense of the public interest. And so this Board of Education uh, that uh, the uh, legislature in its wisdom presented to the, the public for its consideration and which the public in turn approved uh, and gave uh, the governor uh, the opportunity, and I was the first governor to have that opportunity with its passage, the opportunity to appoint a school board that would act in the public interest uh, is making its report today. It's not at the end of a of strict calendar year. It's at the end of the legislative session following their uh, their year in service. And uh, uh, I couldn't be happier, uh, literally, than to be the recipient, if you will, or the, the vehicle for passing on uh, the board's report. This is the State of Hawaii Board of Education Report on Public Education. It's, as they say, jam-packed with facts. Uh, it has considerable per, uh, perspective, and we're going to try, uh, in the interests of time and, and, uh, and circumstance, to have a couple of presentations today, then, that uh, will reflect both uh, uh, a welcome uh, to you all here today who are, who are observing uh, a kind of summary for uh, the, the board's activity through the chair, uh, and uh, the chair will in turn uh, introduce the, the, the person that as representative of, of all of those for whom we are directing our attention, a student. And uh, uh, in turn, we will have Cheryl Lupanui who will be speaking for the board uh, with regard to at least one or two of the items that were of singular importance to them among the many that they have come to grips with. And following that, uh, we will have the opportunity then to see the, the legislative outcome. As I indicated, this is the end of the legislative uh, session, uh, uh, to act on the policy of the board with regard to charter schools, uh, which has been uh, a point of concern, contention, and opportunity uh, for some time now. And uh, uh, we will have uh, members of the legislature here for the signing uh, of that uh, bill that uh, is the direct outcome of the good work uh, that the board has done uh, over the past year and through the legislative session. So with that, um, I want to introduce Don Horner, uh, who has been my partner, certainly as chair of the Board of Education and, and, uh, and has been a, a voice uh, for the public uh, and uh, I think has served uh, our community more than well with regard to meeting the expectations of the public for citizen service. Uh, if, if there is a public-spirited citizen uh, in this state, uh, you can uh, say the name Don Horner, and uh, I think you don't have to go much further than that. Don? <laughs> 
Thank you, Governor. We, on behalf of the board, I just want to say thank you to you for your just um, continuous leadership in this regard. It's been a privilege to serve with you in this endeavor. On behalf of the board, um, we officially give you the report, sir, if I may. I think you have a copy, but. There we go. Hold it up there. Here we are. <laughs> the, um, Thank you, John. <clears throat> yes, sir. The, the report reflects what your board believes is good progress, good progress. But clearly, there's much to be done. Uh, we do have a clear vision. We've met uh, now for one year. Every month, we had at least six public meetings per month to listen to the stakeholders, because our first mission was to listen. And I think we've done that, and we have a clear vision on where we need to go. Uh, it's really divided into four, three segments, which is primarily, number one, student achievement. Number two is staff development. Number three is improving our support services. The board is organi organized around those three missions, and so now the department has been significantly reorganized by the superintendent in regards to those three missions. I'm also pleased to also to report that we've just completed, we should be voting on it next month on the 3rd of July, the strategic plan uh, for the department as well as the board. But I also want to just uh, have the privilege of introducing an outgoing board member that we've served with for the last 12 months. The student representative, Y. Sam Lowe, is a product of public education. She exemplifies everything we're trying to achieve. She is now a graduate of Mauna Loa High School and a presidential scholar at the University of Hawaii. And she's here to make a few remarks. Let me introduce you to our student representative. Why, Sam? Thank you, Mr. Horner, for those kind words. And I would like to extend my thank yous and um, gratitude to the governor and to the Department of Education, and last but not least, also to uh, the legislature and to uh, my, my colleagues on the Board of Education. It's been a pleasure to serve um, with you all and to um, serve the students of Hawaii in my capacity. And so this year, this past year, as a student representative on the board, I've had the great opportunity to um, take part in discussion and um, a multitude of issues, starting with um, board policy changes in 4540 for graduation requirements and down to um, just recently student uh, transportation. And through through my experiences, I've I've come to um, been able to part, um, give insight into decisions that have been made in various policies. And as I'm learning along the way, I'm also, um, I feel myself as part of a, um, a part of a pioneer, um, pioneering effort for other students who would come um, after me, uh, either in the capacity of student representative or just um, being a student. And overall, I am very optimistic about the direction that we are taking um, for our students and our education. Um, through this past year, I've been working extensively with the Hawaii State Student Council, the Secondary st uh, Student Conference, as well as a board member, um, board chair, Mr. Horner, and, and also to increase the, the prevalence of student representation in, in the, on the Board of Education and in the state of Hawaii. And I'm pleased to report that uh, through our efforts, we have been able to um, revise our campaign. In the past, we have been fighting for uh, student voting rights for the student member on the, the board. From here on now, we will be uh, looking at a more effective uh, method of representation where we will actually incorporate every single high school in the state of Hawaii onto the Hawaii State Student Council into the expanded Congress, and we will be expanding and increasing uh, student participation in, on the Board of Education and henceforth the Department of Education in, in um, measures that would uh, garner more student support and attention um, by administrators to student concerns. This is something that we are very proud of, and we are very um, happy and uh, looking forward to uh, witnessing next year and for years after. And we, I, I believe, um, as well as most people, everyone here in this room, I, be I truly believe in the talents and the abilities of our students. If we give them our support and our trust, we 
I am overly, I'm very confident that we will see them rise to the expectations and, and rise beyond them before our very eyes. And so I would like to make it known that we have complete confidence in our students. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Cheryl Kahane Lapunui, uh, who will be who chairs the Student Achievement Committee, um, a committee which I have sat on this past year, and which has um, looked at some really challenging and important issues that concerns the students and, and and the state and the department. So thank you. Aloha. Waisam, you're such a wonderful asset to us, and you've been a wonderful voice for our students. I want to just thank you. Um, so this year, your Board of Education has made some significant decisions that affect student achievement. And I want to just reiterate, that's achievement for all our students. And to highlight just two of these accomplishments, First has been the adoption of new high school, uh, a new high school diploma, and this is in order to prepare all of our students for success after high school. The second is the passing of new educator effectiveness policies, and this allows us to tie the practices of our teachers and principals to the outcomes of learning with our students. And so these policies help to ensure that we support them, that we evaluate them based on effectiveness, and of course that we acknowledge and recognize their success. This morning, as you heard from Chair Horner, we have continued our, our discussion on a DOE strategic plan. And what's one of the important things to note is that this is actually a unified Board of Education and Department of Education strategic plan. We started this process back in February. We look for full approval, as you heard in July. And what's so significant, too, is this, that this plan not only unites us as a DOE and a BOE, but it unites everyone who cares about education so that we can really move forward and focus our efforts, prioritize them, and achieve the successes that we look for. I remember when I first started and one of the uh, things that really uh, resonated with me was that we as a board were committed to a culture of caring. And I take that to heart and I know all of us as members do. And in the spirit of that culture of caring that we want to set, we continue to collaborate and we will continue to collaborate with our governor, with our legislators, with our department, and with all our community stakeholders. And one example of that recently has been the collaboration on Senate Bill 2115, which provides for the continued opportunities for our Hawaii's public charter schools to serve our keiki in new and innovative ways. And so at this time, I'd like to introduce Senator Jill Tokuda, who's our Senate Education Chair, and Representa Representative Della Al-Baladi, who is our House Education Vice Chair, who co-chaired a task force on charter schools, which resulted in Senate Bill 2115. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Don. Thank you, board members. Thank you, Governor. And thank you to everyone else who's in this um, room. I want to first um, start off by talking about seven, uh, Senate Bill 2115 um, by quoting um, someone I really appreciate in this world. And as I stand here and I look at all of your faces here and all the groups of people that you represent, the institutions you represent, you know, this really this really rings true true um, for, for the many of the accomplishments we, we have today to celebrate. The quote is from Margaret Mead and it says, never doubt that a small dedicated group of people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Um, as I look into this room, I see small groups of people um, maybe colliding, but more than colliding, collaborating. Um, there's, and, and sometimes we operate, the legislature can operate in its own realm sometimes. The Board of Education can sometimes seem to be in its own realm. And then there is this task force, this wonderful task force that I was able to work with, with Senator Takuda. You know, that this group, this dedicated group of folks, really demonstrates how we collaborated. 
we had members, we had community members, we had uh, representatives of charter schools, we had department administrators, we had board members, and we had legislators. We tackled tough issues. Are there tough issues still out there? Certainly there are. But what this task force demonstrated to me that was really that dedicated groups of people can improve systems, can work for the betterment of our schools, and can really place high expectations of focus on quality schools and student achievement as their goals. And what we've accomplished today, one of the, you know, there's a lot in it, Senate Bill 2115. Um, but one of the things that I'm most proud about is we've talked a lot about performance evaluations of teachers. Well, this bill embodies performance evaluations for schools. We talk about charter schools being leaders in, an, in, a, in innovation. The charter school community is truly innovating and showing us how we can lead, by example, how we can impose performance measurements on ourselves and how we are going to achieve um, those um, student achievement levels to ensure that education is, a, is quality education. I, and I think the, one of the, uh, the other things that's gonna be coming out of this Senate Bill 2115 as we move forward, as the system strengthens, as the school strengthens and are, are able to report on the good things that the charter schools are doing is that we're going to see the dedicated work of small schools, a small group of people, just mushroom. And I think that's something that the board, I remember Don early on in our task force sessions asking about that. How do we take the work of these small community schools and extend it out? I really do think again, um, when I see the dedicated work of the board in this report that they've put together and all the accomplishments that they have achieved as an all volunteer group. They get no pay for this, but they dedicate hours and hours of their time and service to the community. So truly, today is a great day to celebrate the fact that small groups of dedicated folks can do wonderful things. I'd like to turn it over to uh, Senator Takuda. Thank you, Representative Bilotti. You know, while I was standing here, um, as Representative Bilotti was speaking, I was looking at the bill governor's going to sign. I think you're missing about 90 pages because this should be a much thicker document uh, before you hear. You know, I can tell you, honestly, and a lot of really great things have been said. Um, I had two little boys over the last few years and endured much pain and toil and trial through the labor process, gestation, and even now as they grow up and go through preschool. This task force and this work was way harder than any of that, uh, but no less rewarding, I can tell you, and no less important. Uh, we all came together, as Co-Chair Pilati said, as a group of caring individuals who believe in charter schools, who recognize that our students, our communities, our parents, we need options, and charter schools are those options of innovation for those students that need something different. There is a huge role to play for charter schools. We came together as a group and we spent hours upon hours together and what you have before you is this bill. But more importantly, what you have to me is an acceptance and a commitment by so many amongst us and many here and many more not here that really believe in where we need to go if we're going to be successful as a charter school movement. We literally took the very best of national models of best practice and we mixed that with what we know works well locally, what we've done here well, and we've created a system of governance that's going to ensure that we have the autonomy that charter schools need to be innovative, to do new things, coupled with that accountability that is required because again, these are public school students and taxpayer dollars. And in the end, we know what we're gonna get, which is increased student achievement. The winners in all of this really will be our students, our communities, our families, and I can't think of a better way to end the legislative session. Again, we have worked so hard, but I think as I've told many of you, the real work <laughs> lies ahead. The devil is in the details. So this is going to call upon all of us to embrace a huge change in culture, a huge change in practice. But I can tell you that I speak not only for myself, but I think also for Representative Bilotti and your legislators that we stand ready and willing to work with you. If we are going to be successful and make sure that this 91 page document over here doesn't just become another set of statute, we are all going to have to work together to make this happen. Just as we have stood beside our new Board of Education, well, one-year-old Board of Education now, 
And we have said it's not just enough to expect we must give back to them. We must work with them. We need to do the same when it comes to our charter schools. So I can tell you that it's a very exciting day for me. We've been looking forward to this for a very long time. And I would name names, but there's too many. But I just want to say, especially to those that are here, and you have in here really, um, these are the true heroes in all of this. Uh, Representative Bellotti and I, we were able to put our name up there as co-chairs, but we would have been nothing, we could have done nothing had it not been for the efforts of our task force members and countless of volunteers who weren't even named to the task force but said, you know what, our kids are that important. I am going to commit myself to this effort. I am going to give now and I'm gonna to give tomorrow. And it's because of all of you that I will continue to work hard and really look forward to making this a reality. So thank you for joining us on this very auspicious occasion and I can't wait to get to work on what lies ahead. So thank you Governor for having us here today. Thank you for being here. Well, you can't get to work any faster than I can sign the bill. So I'm, we're gonna take this uh, podium down, I think. Are we not now to do it or I'm gonna sign it? Okay, well, uh, I can sign, okay. Afterwards, we will take holy pictures. Okay, and we'll take the podium down. Very good. I don't think any more needs to be said after those two eloquent statements with regard to not only the purpose of the uh, of uh, this bill, which has this benign title of relating to charter schools. <laughs> it's that easy. Uh, so this is the culmination of all of that effort. Done. This is where I take credit for penmanship. <laughs> okay, let's get this podium down then and let's... Do oh yes, questions. Yeah, uh, how about, yeah, uh, 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 Jill, Della, come up. Uh, who wants to, uh, Cheryl, you started out, you, you get to take the rest of the blame. And any of the other members of the board, you know, I didn't really introduce all the members of the board. Please stand up, all the members that are here, so that everybody can all who to blame. There we are. I went right ahead and had you all in the room and, and of course, all the charter school people. So we'll take uh, uh, questions. Should we bring up some of the folks from the charter schools, too? Anybody who wants to come up and answer questions <laughs> can, can, uh, seems to want to give can the do questions it. Away here. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, you know you're right. Yeah. You call, that's right. That's right. Uh, I, I recall very well um, having to, to do my lines and so on. What was the name of the system? Cursive? No, no, no. Yeah. No, there was a, it was, a, it was a, a, a style, no, of writing, right? Nancy, you know what I'm talking about. There was a name for it. Oh, I'm ashamed I can't. I can't recall what it was, but it didn't, it didn't work very well for me, Wayne. Yeah, yeah, Wayne. So uh, you said uh, on that 91-page document there was yes. uh, performance evaluations for charter schools. Yes. Could you elaborate on that? No. Here. <laughs> yeah. Here's the work. No, the work that got done uh, here, they, they, they should uh, have the opportunity to summarize that right so you know for those of you who are keeping track of the deliberations and also the task force one very important component of our recommendations was to have performance contracts in place uh, previously they had a detailed implementation plan what we said was it wasn't enough to rely on that initial contract or application that you came in with we needed to make sure that a performance contract was not a static document. It was a living document. And so in addition to being the thing that you are judged by every five years annually, um, you will be working with your authorizer, in this case, the commission, to come up with annual performance targets that you must meet. So again, everything really comes back to, are you really fulfilling your mission as a charter school to best serve and meet the needs of our students? And there will be a constant discussion between authorizer, in this case the commission, and their charter schools. And through the reporting requirements that we put in the bill, there's actually an annual discussion of how our students are doing and how our schools are doing 
that will be done every year by the Board of Education, by the Commission itself as well, as well as all of the charter schools. So we have really ramped up the reporting, but again, it is to focus back in on the student and how our schools are doing in that regard. So I don't know if you want to add anything. Yes, time is now suspended officially. <laughs> One more. 